Welcome, everybody. I'm talking to Dr. Teresa Deicher, who is the founder, and that's the way to pronounce your name, right? Dr. Deicher? Deicher, yes. Uh, okay. And she's the founder and lead scientist at Sound Choice Pharmaceutical Institute. And she is, has a doctorate from Stanford University in molecular and cellular physiology in 1990 and completed her postdoctoral work at the University of Washington. Her career has been spent in commercial biotechnology industry, and she has done basic work in biological and drug discovery through clinical development. Um, and the Sound Choice Pharmaceutical, which is your organization, that's an advocacy organization that tries to pressure on drug companies to improve safety of vaccinations, correct? Am I, am I saying that right? So Sound Choice Pharmaceutical Institute is actually a biomedical research institute that focuses on research and information about the manufacturing of vaccines and the public health consequences uh, to our vaccine manufacturing practices. We're not an advocacy organization um, ourselves. Okay. So would you describe yourself as a science organization or research organization, information organization? A, re a, a research and, and information organization, exactly. Okay. And your own um, expertise has been in looking at the impacts of uh, the use of human fetal cells in vaccines. Correct. And um, when I was originally made aware of the vaccine manufacturing practices, um, uh, we were asked, we have a for-profit as well, ABM Biotechnology, and we were asked to bring in alternative vaccines so that um, people who wanted to vaccinate and who morally or philosophically could not use the human fetal manufactured vaccines so that they would have an alternative. And in agreeing to take a look at that, um, I began reading about vaccines. I wasn't a vaccine expert. I've done, you know, antibody and protein manufacturing projects, but not vaccines. It, you can't miss the vaccine autism controversy, which as an outsider, uh, you know, I found interesting and began reading the scientific papers about that and uh, received some phone calls about how the manufacturing could impact human health. And one call was uh, whether a, a, a gene that causes autism could come through the manufacturing process, which is impossible. And in replying to that, I did, I did realize, well, you know, there is going to be a lot of human fetal DNA fragments that are going to come through the manufacturing process. And that is potentially very dangerous. Tell us first why anybody would want to put fetal tissue in vaccines. Where is it in the manufacturing process um, that fetal tissue is used? It is a substrate upon which viruses are grown in the manufacturing. You, you are correct. There is not any fetal tissue in the vaccines. They use cell lines that were made from the body bodies of electively aborted babies. But if they were to use cell lines from placenta, that's not morally objectionable. The human health consequences would be as of concern, right? So regardless of the source of the fetal cell, the contaminants from the cell line that would be primitive fetal material will be a significant safety concern. And how do those get in the vaccine? Well, a, a vaccine is basically a long string of either RNA or DNA, the virus. It's too long to make economically in a test tube. And so they mimic nature's way of 
replicating viruses and they infect cells. And the virus grows in the cells. And then at the end of that process, they try to purify the virus away from the cellular material. But most people understand there's a, a give and take between purity and amount. And so if they were to purify away all of the fetal cell line contaminants, the yield of the virus would be so low, no one could afford it. And so it's that balance between yield and purity that results in actually very high levels of fetal DNA uh, fragments being left in vaccines. And now let's talk about the dangers. So the, the fetal DNA is what's considered primitive DNA. Viral DNA is primitive, fetal DNA is primitive. And when I say primitive, DNA is not just ATCG. It is decorated and it's decorated with sugars and methyl groups um, and, and other additions uh, like nitrosyl groups that are put onto the DNA that regulate how the DNA is used. And that decoration is entirely species specific. So if a, a chicken cell is used to make our vaccines, we have chicken DNA fragments in the final product, but those are decorated like a chicken. And so our body will recognize them as foreign and eliminate them. And if they were to get into a human cell, they could not incorporate into the DNA. They just cannot. And they actually don't even get taken up to any extent. But when you have... And let me go back. Let me interrupt you for a second because I want you to finish that thought. Um, but one of the questions people are asking now is which vaccines have fetal tissue in them? And... I know that for a long time, fetal cells were not used in vaccines. Almost exclusively animal cells were used. So maybe you can talk about why they started replacing the animal cells with fetal cells and which particular vaccines contain fetal tissue. So um, currently the MMR vaccines, the chickenpox vaccine, uh, one of the shingles vaccines, uh, Zostavax, is made in fetal cells. All hepatitis A containing vaccines are made in fetal cells. Uh, some polio containing vaccines and some rabies containing vaccines. And people can go to our website, www.soundchoice.org, and pull down a list of the vaccines. Um, interestingly, Sanofi just switched the manufacturer of their polio and polio containing vaccines away from human fetal cells to an animal cell. And, and I know that Japanese did out of the MMR vaccine too because the MMR vaccine was causing so many problems. Since so, they put the human fetal tissue in and I think they switched to rabbit cells. Um, well, there are multiple vaccines available in Japan, and there are uh, vaccines, MMR, that are made in rabbit and quail cells. Um, and the Japanese have a different approach to vaccination. You can get the individual vaccines as well. You just want the measles. You just want the mumps. You just want the rubella. Um, and, and that was made by Kitasato Institute, who is now um, bought by Daiichi Sankyo. So um, there are other MMR vaccines that are sold in Japan that are made from MMR. Merck's MMR that is made in human fetal cells is also sold in Japan. So uh, depends on which company they get their vaccine from. Oh, you were saying that if you inject an animal cell. Oh, look, before we get to that, let me finish the other question. Why did they switch from using exclusively animal cells to fetal cells? I think it's complicated. Um, the animal rights movement was very active at that time. And for instance, chicken pox could have been manufactured in a guinea pig cell line. 
uh, but there's quite a bit of objection to using uh, animals for research and uh, the animal activists were definitely uh, driving them to go and use the the bodies of the aborted babies um, <laughs> epi ep economically they thought that it would be cheaper it's not though because the regulatory aspects are so much higher and it turns out making the virus oh, it costs less than 10 cents Viling the virus is the cost that's ten dollars so um, it, it, it didn't end up being more economical for them. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of weird to think that the animal rights activists have more clout the vaccine companies than do the anti-abortion activists. They do, and you know what's really uh, alarming is the lack of outcry over uh, human babies born alive at five to six months old so that their hearts can be attained beating and they have to be beating to be used in the research that's being done. The heart is stopped beating, it's not, it's not useful, you cannot use it. And so these babies are delivered alive and their hearts cut out without anesthesia. I, I wouldn't do that to a mouse. What do you mean? When you say five months old, you're talking about a fetus that is five months old. Yes. And they are, they are live birthed. Yes. And and they are surgically killed. Their hearts are cut out, or they cut through their faces to get good brain tissue. Okay, that is horrible. Um, it is. And, and we wouldn't do that to a mouse. 